Howdy, it's Matt here, and in this video, we are going to be testing out the NASA 32 board and iNav. Now, if you've not been following this series along, uh, is that go back to part one and you'll find out all the details about this series. Firstly, good news. As you're about to find out, the, uh, after fixing the calibration and moving the buzzer off the back of the TechSumo, is that we have a winner. It does work as expected, but this is a series and I'm gonna give you a heads up. The next time I try iNav, things don't go to plan. And also we've had a bit of a shocker with the other two boards and also right in front of me right now, I also have the Pix Racer as well. So this series was only meant to be just be a couple of videos. I know that I'm already free in, but this is a journey of finding out the most inexpensive and most capable board which we can use on our models. So with that said, let's go and see what happens. So this is me getting set up with the Texomo, just going through and checking that everything is working as expected. Uh, so I've been checking the Elevons, just checking the modes, making sure she will arm, uh, and just going through the standard process which you would do when launching any model. Now you'll notice that there is some beeping in the background because somebody set the switch on the Tyrannus handset to beeper mode. So she is there <laughs> beeping away like a good one, which you would want, I hasten to add, uh, if you did lose the model, just to flip the switch and the beeper would go off so you know where she is. So I'm now getting ready for to go and take her up and give her a chuck and let's see what happens. Rate mode active. Return to launch. Where's it going? Return to launch. When it's returned, hey, it returned. So that's return to launch. I don't know where it's going now, though. Is it coming back? Oh. No, I need to rescue it. Right, let's try loiter mode. Loiter. It's loitering. It is a bit of wind up there today. You've got to give it its due. No stick inputs. I'd say that's loitering. Obviously I've got an issue with the angle. Let's bring her back. Oh, in fact, let's try return to home. Return to launch. She's making her way back. She is banking off there. There is wind out there. If it doesn't turn right, I'm bringing it back. Oh, it is. Again, look, no hands. No hands. That is not really a return to launch, but... Where's she going? She is back. She is trying to work her way back. You've got to give her a due. And that is about 50 metres as well. And it is windy out there. Where's she going now? I'm poised to click it off. No, she's turning back round. Off. Right, let's bring her out. Right, I'm happy with that. Run back to the flight line. She's 
She's very stable. All right, going to land all right, Alan, from right to left. Very stable. Maybe the nose. Oh, landed. All right to retrieve. Well, she's having a good old beep about summer. But it still did all right. Not impressed. So that was the iNav after proper calibration. And it did all right. It did all right. So we're back at the desk now and after the little bit of unfortunate miscalibration and the issue with the buzzer being glued on the back of the box which I had the NAS A32 board in and I unglued it and then put it right out as far as, the, as I could. I took it back up to the flying field as we've just been in scene and it did work. To be fair it was a very windy day up there and I did have to hit the return to launch uh, switch twice. For it to kick in but once it did kick in it did work pretty well it did do a big figure of eight and in loiter mode it also did okay and it went up to about 50 meters so that's happy days so things are looking all rosy right now for the nas a32 and inav however before you even consider putting the uh, iNav software on your NAS A32 board and putting it on your model, I strongly suggest that you wait until the next video. And the reason why I'm suggesting that you wait for the next part of this series is because reliability is a big factor. Yeah, I'm using a TechSumo. You may only be using a TechSumo, but if you think about the time, parts, and energy, and money which you invest in these models, you need a board which is going to be reliable. Now you're gonna find out why reliability is a big concern of mine in the next part of this series. So if you are not subscribed just yet, over on the YouTube channel, uh, there's a subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and you'll find out why I will not be using iNav on the NAS A32 board again. So with that said, for myself, Matt, Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next part. Cheerios!